the hills of Northern California, a small body of water, two men, two swim baits are on the hunt for monster bass. Big things do come in small waters on monster fish. Whatever it takes, wherever it takes them. It's a hunt for monster fish. Trev Gowdy. There he goes. And Fred Levitt, man. Come on! A breed of men dedicated to one thing, catching the biggest fish on the planet. Ah! Tangle with the Titans. Yes! On Trev Gowdy's Monster Fish. Gray early spring fog blankets the Golden State, and we're on the road to the pre-spawn in Clear Lake, California's largest and oldest lake. Half million year old Clear Lake covers more surface area than any other body of fresh water in the state, and so has more bass habitat and structure. The go-to guy for hunting down big bass in Clear Lake is my good friend, Scott. All right. Check this spot out of here, see if these fish have moved in a little bit. We gotta get them to stage outside, you know, they gotta get that temperature, 54 plus to start moving in back here. We got some 58 degree water away in the back, but I think we'll try outside first and we'll move in. I like to see right when my lower hits how deep it is there. There's no secret to catching big bass, other than being prepared to try every possible technique until the one that works is found. Now we've found that the big bass aren't biting out in the big water, so it's time to make a move. Here in the backwater, the need is for a finesse touch in thin diameter clear monofilament. We're looking for bass off the points and the shallow bays, whose warmer waters we hope will draw on the bigger fish. bad idea using a spin rod with light line to flip up under the beds of toolies. Mostly, it's run and gun from one set of structure to the other. I haven't tried that toolie right there yet. Perfect. This guy is cold, little male. We're off the spawning beds and about 12 feet thrown out to 20, fishing that 12 to 20 foot level. Because these fish are just about ready to push up. So this is a good sign. We know the males are here in the deeper water, they're gonna push the females up, so. You know? Trev, these four pounders we're catching are babies. They get up in the 10 to 15 to 20 pound range. I've had friends of mine come out here, catch 15 to 20 pound largemouth bass, huge bass. This is one of the best fisheries in California, possibly the whole United States. The fish. Freezing little male. How healthy these little males are. This is a little teeny male, too, here for this lake, right? Yeah, little baby male. Yeah. You're a respectable fish back in New England. You know, not a monster, but that's what we're looking for, the males. Yeah. You know what's with them. They're 20 pound fish, you still say. Okay, we started to get a pattern going here. Super deep water. 
close to rock and toolies. Water's about 54. We're right on the edge of these big fish. There we go. How about that? Good job, Scott. Thank you, Trev. With the males will be the big sows, heavy with eggs to spread in the spawn. There we go. Northern California's ancient Clear Lake, we're probing the structure to see if the big sow bass have migrated into the shallows from the deep water in preparation for the spawn. Look at the lines, beautiful, they really are. These fish are really handsome. Clean. Where are the females? Good job, dude. The V's of geese spell the coming of a severe cold front that will close down the fishing on Clear Lake as a bass go dormant. With the fishing shut off on Clear Lake by the cold front, it's time to hunt for bass farther south. Another lake and another chance at another bass. Brought to California in the post-Civil War period, bass found abundant prey in juvenile native rainbow trout. And my good friend Matt knows this lake like the back of his hand. This looks great. This is one of your favorite points, right? Yeah. This looks fantastic. Let's go hit it. The main key here for us is these stable nights. You can have these cold fronts pushed through, but it's not all the warm days all the time. You want to have the nights that get stable. You don't want them dipping down in the 20s, 30s, low 40s. You want to have consistent mid-40 nights to even 50. Just three of those back to back. Boom, it's all up. A little bite, a little bite. Bam. Here she comes. With its fierce red eyes, the smallmouth may be pound for pound, the toughest fight of all the bass. You know, one thing that Matt does proficiently on this, his body of water here, is he moves a lot. He runs and guns a lot. Due to lack of big population of smallmouth. This is our, what, 32nd, 33rd stop? Something like that. Yeah, at least. So just got to keep looking. Keep fishing these banks. Just drop off each weed line, whatever you can. Hole hopping and the finesse of a spinning rod pay off. You 
you on your hunt for monster fish, you can try these swim baits. Imitate rainbows, but the key is this has five ounces of weight in the bigger one. That really keeps it on the bottom. Hook's got to be on top. But don't think that the bigger the bait is always going to yield the bigger largemouth. You can try these small ones. This has hook on top and just an ounce and a half of weight. And most importantly, you've got to use a five to one reel ratio. This gives you consistent speed with movement on the bait and also keeps it just about a foot off the bottom. That's a key on your hunt for monster fish. You know, it's what Matt's doing right now, he's working the motor. You're really gonna need to do this as a team. We've got a very stiff wind today, it's very cold. But we're kind of working down with this wind, throwing our baits downwind, allowing us to keep them on the bottom. Remember the old rule goes here. The old rule. If you want to fish in the end of your line, keep the end of your line close to the bottom. Today, on the Bass Whisperer of Northern California, an incoming cold front sends us south. The bays in the backwaters of this reservoir are like home to my good friend Matt, who puts me onto some of the best bass the Golden State has to offer. Not quite the monsters, but we're getting there. You know, Trev, what's really unique about this reservoir is that it's not very deep. It's only about 45, 48 feet deep at the, the deepest part of the lake. So there's a lot of trout in here at this time of year, but the rest of the year, these trout don't hold over. They don't make it through the hot summers. So what happens is these bass feed really heavily in the winter and the springtime, stocking up on these trout, eating when they can. Uh, the rest of the year, they're gonna switch over to shad and things like that. So this time of the year, these swim baits are working really well. They're putting a lot of trout in here, so you've got the bass really keyed in on them. We'll soon see if Matt really knows what he's talking about. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. Babies in California. Those are the babies. Okay. Trev, how many lakes do you go to where you get a seven pounder, you say nice fish, and drop it back over the side? This one. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here. Now it's my turn to see how big a bass I can drop back over the side. God, this is gorgeous here, isn't it? My God. Of course, not all the sights in this lake are quite as beautiful. California fault lines and fissures can release deadly gases. Not a great choice to find a monster fish here. He may be three-headed. Time to make a move. With the wind picking up, it's more difficult to control the speed of your swim bait along the bottom. It takes a team to catch a big bass. Oh, there he is. This is the rainbow imitation we've been talking to you about. Hook rides in the top, good for dragging the bottom of the weeds, but more importantly, 
good because it hooks right in the roof of the mouth. It does not cut hook these big, beautiful fish. You know, watching these largemouth in the four to seven pound class, they're so aerial. They can really get all that air in the water. But these big monster largemouth, and they're double digits. A, you don't want them to jump, because the weight of these swim baits, five ounces or more, are hooked in the roof of the mouth, and they can spin them quite easily. But most importantly, they just wallow on their bellies. They're so heavy and so big, they can barely get their heads out of the water, which is a good thing, because you want to keep that bait in their mouth at all times to get them to the boat. sets the hook into a monster California largemouth. Oh, you got one? And like that, it's a daily double. There it is. generations, the waters of California's lakes and reservoirs have become home to some of the biggest bass in the country. Now for me and my friend Matt, it's a double play on Monster Largemouth. Big fish, Matt. You want to reel fast to keep a bass this big from leaping. One hog landed, and it's time to see what Matt has at the end of his line. A massive simultaneous pair of monster bass to be found only in California. Ooh -ha. This day of California dreaming is not yet done. Well, this is a certain spot, huh? It feels good. You've got to use a monofilament on these California trout eating monsters. Braid just doesn't work. Even though the water is murky, I like to use a fluorocarbon line from beginning to end. It's got the stretch that you need when you hook these big fish. Use braid, it's gonna pull the bait right out of their mouth. Stretch is the key to success in this game, especially when you've gotta winch them in fast. You can't let them even blow their heads out of the water. You gotta winch them in fast. Somewhere in California waters lies a new world record that may be only one cast away. There we go. Oh, it's a big fish. Monster. 
You know how you always drive by small bodies of water near your hometown or even on a highway on a long trip and wonder what's in them? Well, maybe next time you'll stop and try to fish one of them. Think about it. You never know what holds a monster fish.